Welcome back to a new tutorial series where we're going to be talking about Neos' haptic systems. I'm here in Sojourner Island, which is a map made by the Neos team's content creation team, who are in charge of making all sorts of content and experiences, including the MTC and this map. This map is fantastic and shows off the haptic systems that we have here in Neos to uh, their full extent. Everything here is pretty much haptic enabled and we'll be doing a tour of that and talking about how some of it's built in probably part two or three. Part one here is going to be talking about setup. You may notice here in front of me that we have the B Haptics logo, and that's because the uh, map that you're standing in here, Sojourner Island, was made for a B Haptics event. Do note, though, that uh, the haptic systems in Neos are compatible with other haptic providers. Check the video description for links to other supported providers and a way that you can request your own uh, or desired haptic provider to be integrated into Neos. We support a wide variety. Also included is your controllers yourself. Your controllers have uh, haptics inside them, and we support those too. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to step forward from this sign and head over into third person to talk a little bit about our setup. For setup, it's very important to follow the guide from the manufacturer of your uh, haptics provider. So for the controllers, you're actually good. You don't need to do anything. But for any haptic systems, you'll need to go ahead and head to their website. I'll put some links in the video description. Follow their setup guide. Specifically for B haptics, which we'll be focusing on here today, but do note that all the content we'll be creating will work for any other provider. There's a couple of extra things I'd like you to keep in mind. I'm currently wearing the uh, B haptics Taxu X40, which uh, affords me a great deal of uh, haptics vibration all across my chest and back. In the uh, settings for the B Haptics player, which is the software that runs B Haptics uh, integrations, uh, you can right click this icon here, which is my uh, my suit, and then there's this item on here called button lock, which you can switch on. And this prevents the button on the back of the suit from uh, turning the headset, uh, not the headset, sorry, the uh, haptics vest off. This is great for those who sit down in VR or maybe recline. Um, I continually turned this thing off until Froppy pointed out that there was options. So thanks a lot to Froppy. Froppy was one of the first players inside Neos to get their hands on a B haptic system. Let's go ahead and get going. We're going to be starting with basic uh, haptics creation here in Neos and then move on to more advanced topics before we go ahead and close out for part two or three where we'll be looking at uh, the haptic stuff throughout this map. Let's get going. I'm going to go ahead over here into Smooth POV. Once we're in Smooth POV, I'm going to go ahead and set up a basic haptic source. Before I do that, actually, I just forgot we need to make sure the haptics is turned on in the settings. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the settings tab and turn on my private UI and show you exactly where that setting is. So you can see that setting on the middle of the settings on the left here. It just says haptic feedback. Make sure it's turned on. If that's not turned on, you won't feel anything, and that's no fun. With that turned on, we can go ahead and get started. Let me turn off private UI, get rid of the dash here, and get going. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a simple cube. This cube is just going to uh, vibrate any haptics that you have. That includes any provider. So we can go ahead and uh, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to grab my developer tooltip here, and I'm going to go to create new 3D model box. Push that away a little bit, shrink it down a little bit, and then hit secondary in it, and then open inspector. A box has a lot of components on it um, that are quite complicated. I do have a video in the video description that talks about all of these components and what they do. Uh, but for now, you just need to worry about the ones that we add to it, and then it will work as per normal. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a uh, another box collider to it. So the box collider that we currently have is uh, of type static. I talk about more um, about haptic, uh, not haptic, sorry, collider types in uh, my collider tutorial series. But this type property here is set to static. We need another one with a collider type set to haptic trigger. So I just hit D, which duplicates the box collider here. You could also add one from attach component physics colliders box collider but by uh, duplicating that we get the exact same settings and then on this type here I'm just going to scroll it across to haptic trigger the reason we have both is so that we can move it around and it's a haptic trigger next we need to add uh, a component which tells the haptic systems what to do like how strong should the haptics be for this particular box to do that we're going to go ahead and go to attach components and then input haptics and then haptic volume. You may notice that there's a lot of components on this list. Do just concentrate on haptic volume for now. Uh, the rest are used for advanced setup of avatars or uh, custom avatars that you can set up. Don't worry about them too much. Neos does like to do everything for you. I will uh, show you how that works in a bit. Uh, we'll also be going over filters, but for now just go ahead and add that haptic volume. With the haptic volume added, you'll see it's a standard Neos component. Uh, there is a few new properties on it. Uh, first is sensation, and the second is intensity here. So sensation is the type of haptic sensation that you would like. For uh, many vibrational haptics providers, you should set this to 
vibration. But if you'd like a different uh, sensation, do set that up ahead of time because uh, any haptic providers that do support those other uh, sensation types will pick that up. Uh, the one I'm wearing right now only supports vibration, um, but uh, I'm looking forward to other providers in the future that support other ones. Now here on the intensity, this is how strong you would like the haptic sensation to be. So at zero, there is zero intensity, and at one, there is a lot of intensity. I don't recommend setting anything to uh, exactly zero or exactly one, as things just aren't like that in the world. You should reserve one on the intensity for something that is incredibly intense, uh, and not for anything that is, you know, moderately intense. If everything's at the same intensity, you can't really tell the difference. We'll talk about that more when we go over the um, items within this map that are haptic cable, and I'll show you how that's all done. For now, I'm going to go ahead and leave this at sort of 0 0.5. Do note that the sensation hints list at the bottom here is for um, haptic providers that have uh, what are called sensation hints. B Haptics does not have this. I believe the OO suit does. More information on uh, sensation hints will be in the video description. For now, we'll just leave it blank. It doesn't do anything of harm. So with haptic feedback turned on and uh, the suit all ready to go, if I now put my hand in this, I can feel the haptics on my hand. If I walk through this, then the haptics will go off on the uh, chest there. By the way, if you hear buzzing at any point during this video series, it's not my stomach or a bee, it's actually haptics just triggering. Sorry about that, but I actually think it's good that you can hear it sometimes. There's actually one more thing I can do to help you out though here, which is to show you how to turn on what are called haptic debug visuals. I'm gonna hop into third person. These haptic debug visuals, well, let's get out of the way here, will create a visual across my chest, showing me where all of the haptics points are that I have and showing when they're interacted with. Let me show you how to turn those on. Head back over here into smooth POV. This will vary from avatar to avatar, but I'll show you how to find it in most. I'm gonna go ahead and inspect my hand with secondary. Open inspector. I'm gonna head up a few levels till I get to my uh, hips. A bone, see hips here. I'm going to go ahead and select torso haptics. With torso haptics selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit show debug visuals. With that enabled, if I head back into third person, you'll now see this grid on me. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So, oh dear, not to uh, reset that. There we go. So now you'll see that there's a grid of points. And if I go ahead and grab this cube, where are we? Hold on. Uh, Cube is not grabbable. Oh, it's at the other collider too. There we go. We need a static collider and a haptic trigger collider to move it. So now I can go ahead and I can put this cube inside and you'll see that any ones that I interact with sort of light up a little bit. Might be difficult to see with a white cube, uh, but uh, they are changing a little bit when they're interacted with. So this shows you, uh, you know, all the points that are available, and these map directly to the points on the haptic vest or on other haptics. Uh, so in this case, you know, if I put the cube up here, I am feeling haptics up here, and if I put the cube down here, more around the waist there, I am feeling it on the waist. Same goes with the back. I'm just trying to figure out how to show you my back. There we go. There's a way to rotate around the back. So you can see there's actually two lines of them, so the back ones are for the back and the front ones are for the chest. So there you go. Go ahead and reset the camera here. Just give me a moment. I'm going to have to drag one setting back. There we go. So that's the haptic debug visuals. I actually leave these on sometimes when playing around. They kind of remind me about where the haptic points are and where they're being registered. You can also leave them on for other players to sort of help them uh, help you develop content. So there you go, that's a basic haptic source. I'm now going to go ahead and talk about some of the other things that you can do, and then we'll leave off for part one. So with this haptic source, we're going to go back into Smooth POV. I'm going to go back to the inspector here. We'll close the other one as we don't need it. With this haptic trigger enabled, you might want to do some other things to it, like vary the intensity or change the intensity based on interactions. There's a bunch of things there called haptic filters. We're going to go ahead and take a look at just one, and then I'll uh, leave off this video, and uh, you can play around a little bit, or you can stand by for part two, where I'll go into all of the haptic filters in great detail. So we'll go to attach component, input, haptics, filters, and then we're just going to go ahead and select a uh, simplex noise fil haptic filter here. And now what happens is the haptics isn't just on or off, the haptics is sort of pulsing a little bit. Um, 
using what's called a simplex noise filter. I'll put a link in the description to explain simplex noise, but you can think of this as sort of just like pulsating a little bit. Uh, it feels a little bit like an engine, or there's a better way to do an engine using uh, what's called the sine filter, but it's just sort of, you know, almost like a back massage if you like. So that's an example of a haptic filter. I'll be going over each of them in turn in part two. Like I said, I want to keep things short and concise here so you can take a look. Part two will have video chapters which talk about all of the filters in great depth so you can go between them. And then part three, we'll talk about building for actual worlds. There we go. All right, so I'll leave you off there. Do enjoy playing with haptics. If you have any questions, drop them in the video description or sorry, in the comments area, and I'll get back to you. Bye-bye.